find your voice, focus on personal development, health, education, life choice, relationship. Also, we host Holistic Africa Market. For more information, you can contact Brother Dougie on 0788 I repeat, 0788 also, you can catch us on YouTube. Type in Brother Dougie, find your voice. Also, every Tuesday on SLR Radio from 10:30 p.m. You can tune into slrradio.co.uk. Okay, how's everybody feeling? Everybody great? Okay then. We're gonna start the program. I said, everybody got one of these flyers. Who hasn't got one? And, well, and, now then, it says on the flyer, invest in yourself, your family, and your education. Now, this is host by Find Your Voice. Uh, but first, we need to apologize. Is there any confusion? Um, you know, I'm very surprised what's taking place, but like anything else, we do have to be, use the word, flexible. And we need to be flexible. Um, just a little background. There is another event that's taking place in the main hall, the Messiah um, Garvey Month. So there'll be activities taking place right through the uh, month. So we're focusing this space here, and we're going to make it happen. We are going to make it happen. But first we even start to go into the, um, what we're about. Anyway, some housekeeping rules need to observe. The bathroom, as I'm pointing, it's signposted. Go through this door here, and it's there, and it's on the right. In case of a fire, the door I'm pointing to will be a fire exit, and myself, Patrick, could you put your hand up, please? Everybody see Patrick? will be your fire marshal. <laughs> um, we'll be serving food from over there, so we open it a little bit later when I got yourself together. Yeah. Now, if you've got your mobile phones, please put on vibrant or on silent. We don't want no disturbance. Just to let you people know the program, what's going to happen right now, that um, I'm going to ask a couple of the, um, the stool owners just to talk about their business for about a minute. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about university college, because we're trying to encourage many people to get back into further studies. And we do have someone who's a success student. She'll be sharing her experience with us for a couple of minutes. And then we'll open the program with, um, with Daryl, who will talk about education and finance. And we do have jammers who will be speaking about the points of words. And also we'll have um, Russ McCoy, who will be talking about um, consciousness, what is consciousness, and Melvin Barrett, who will talk about the power of the brain. So is everybody feeling good? Hold on. About four people feeling good. I mean, everybody's not feeling so good. You know? This side, yeah. It's only about four people. I, how are you not feeling? Feeling good? Good? Right, I'm going to take liberty with you, right? Why are you here today? Just let people know why you're here. Enlightenment. Can you give the sister a clap? Enlightenment. Take liberty the sister here. To learn more for my son. Can you please give her a clap, yeah? <laughs> and we take one from this side. I'm going to put in this brother here. Pastor Mark, this brother here.
investment. Yeah. So he's here for investment. Enlightenment. Give him a clap. Enlightenment. And the first one was wisdom. What's what you said? You're here for enlightenment and you're here? Learn more for your son. Okay then, so we're here for different reasons, yeah? No then, hopefully, I don't say hopefully, right? By the end of this evening, you're going to be, um, what's the word for? Inspired. Inspired, yeah? You're going to be enlightened. And if you're not enlightened, I will ask the um, jammers and them, them man that give me a spanking outside. But you're going to be um, so inspired. So when you look at the person next to you and say to him, I am inspired. Whoa. We, we need some more energy. We need some more energy. Look at the person next to you and say to him, I am inspired. Oh, no, we're getting there. And look at him again and say to him, you look absolutely good. <laughs> and then look him again in the eyes, in a cockney voice, and say to him, oh, I look even more better, mate. <laughs> I look even more better, mate. Okay, come on, give us a clap, family. Yeah. All right. No, it's nothing better than having fun. Yeah. Okay then. So what's gonna happen? I'm gonna ask a um, couple of the. Um, we got what dada? What? What? It's not what dada. What letter? I beg your pardon. I got a friend named what dada. What letter? Can you please speak about your business for one minute? Come on, come give her a clap. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Um, my name's Walata. I'm local. I was born and raised in Tottenham. Went to Northumberland Park School. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar. Yes. Um, I am now a qualified solicitor. I've been qualified for just over 10 years. Um, two years ago, I decided to open my own firm after heading about four different um, high street firms. So I've opened a practice, as I said, a sole practitioner, two years now, which is in Arnors Grove, or between Arnors Grove and Whetstone. Um, I've gone a little bit out of the area, but I also still work for people within this um, borough. Um, I'm sure you can work out the reasons why. Um, I do civil litigation, landlord and tenant, debt recovery, wills and probate, um, and in general, if I can help, I will. Um, if I don't practice in the area, I will refer you to somebody who can help. Um, my moral was doing this to make sure that people who needed advice could get advice for a, not an extortionate fee. And also, I practice what's called no win, no fee, because I practiced in housing law, and I realized that a lot of things were being taken out of scope, in particular, um, landlords and tenants. So if a tenant was in a property and it was suffering from bad disrepair um, and the landlords were doing nothing about it, the legal aid companies now said, okay, you can deal with it yourself. You have to find someone who will do no win, no fee. And a lot of solicitors have decided not to do it. So I now represent a lot of these people um, and I take local authorities to court um, and get the properties in a state that's better for or suitable for the tenant. Um, so that's one of my aims. Obviously, I do other areas. Um, if you want to talk to me, then I'm just over and stand there. Um, yeah, that's it. That's myself. Well, okay, that's then. Give the sister a clap. Yeah. Um, Lady Leo, can you please come and uh, talk about your business? Okay. Please. Can you please give Lily Leo a clap, please? Yeah. So you've got one minute to talk about your business. Fantastic. Greetings, greetings, everybody. Thank you. Um, I run an organisation called Gold Onyx, and we do quite a lot of different things in the community. Oh, I didn't realise what I was doing. Uh, lots of things in the community. Um, we run a children's cultural film club every second Saturday 
a month where we show a film, have a discussion about the film. Also, young people and adults talk about any achievements. Um, we also do workshops for people who want to start their own business. We called it Understanding Marcus Garvey, Boot Your Business Idea. We do... Um, recently, we put together a dance group, um, the 27th of last month, to do a dance for the 1st of August. So we've now got a dance group which we call Gold Onyx Kumba. And Kumba, for those of you who don't know, means creativity. Um, I'm on the radio as well. I run a community information show. So if you've got any leaflets that you want me to read out, that's free of charge. So you can get that to me. If you want to come in and do an interview about whatever you're doing in the community, you can do that as well. Okay. Then and that's, that's the minute. That's the minute. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, then. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, then. Now, then, I want to talk a little bit about this in about two minutes. Is anybody interested in um, further studies? Yeah? Well, I know Anne is very keen. Well, what that means that um, <coughs> the University College uh, looking to start to recruit people to get involved in further studying, like business, management, marketing, um, computing, health and social care, travel, nursing, drama, music, and fashion. So is anybody interested? Right? Please come and see me. There's some flyers here. And also, if you could take your, I will give these out. In fact, I would give these out now, in fact. Right? Can someone assist me to give these out? Um, give this out to everybody here. Right? Right? So basically on there, you just need to take your, your number, if you're interested, so we can contact you and give some more information. But we do have someone here, Auntie Jean. Who's heard of Auntie Jean? Yeah. Right. No, then, I was talking about someone about Auntie Jean. And she's a very humble, humble individual. Hardworking, you know, very sincere, very giving. In fact, she gives a lot. And people don't see that side of her. You know, a family, very loving, and she gives so much to the community. So, Angie's going to just, I'm going to, well, I'm going to interview her. Angie, come up here. Give her a clap. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to put her on the spot. Give her, give her that mic there. Now, Auntie G, I know you've been enrolling for the, um, the university college. And how's it going, my sister? It's going okay. Um... With all the other stuff that I'm doing as well, mm. yes, it is hard to sort of like find time to sort of like incorporate in with your normal life. But um, because it's something that I want to do, then it's something I have to find time for, even mm -hmm. if it's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm finding it very um, good, interesting, helpful, especially in what I'm doing now. Um, the course that I started was a business, business course. But you have to, when went through the, start again. I went through the whole process. Basically, they did the process for me. So I spoke and told them what I did, what I want. And the people who did the process did the, um, put the stuff online and did the computer. I thought, okay, good, that's all right. But if you're going to do it, make sure you recheck yourself afterwards mm. because when the course actually started because so many people enrolled in that same course they put us into four groups mm -hmm. the first two groups went into the business course the last two groups went into a different course i was in the fourth group and i ended up doing a um, skills for the workplace course which was not what you actually enrolled in so two weeks along the line that's when they actually announced that basically we was actually on the biz, um, a skills for the workplace course. Having said that, even though it's not the course I actually wanted to go on and I actually budgeted for because it's, each course has its own different budget, um, the skills for the workplace is a lesser course. So it's put me in a predicament whereas I've got to sort of now look for added financial parts. So when they're doing the, the signing on for you, make sure you check 
afterwards, that is still the same course. Mm -hmm. That's the only word of warning that I'll actually give to everybody. Okay, because I just thought, oh yeah, I'm on it, yeah, 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 and just went on to it, and then it's like halfway through, it's like, and then you can't change your course. So, with that, having that in mind, then yes, the rest, everything else is good. Um, even though it's the skills for the workplace, I'm finding it very helpful because of what I'm actually doing now. Um, I'm not doing the profession that I used to do. I've been 25, 28 years as a childminder. So I've never had no reason to do a CV or um, do anything that goes on with, um, you know, like the computer. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning more about the computer. I know how to do a CV now, how to do a cover note, know, know what a cover note is now. So I suppose swings and roundabouts that I'm on the course that is actually meant for me, mm. if you get what I mean. So basically it's a gradual going up. So next year now will be the business course. But if you do want to do a specific course, make sure that once you get in there, double check and check again that you actually on the right course. Because at the beginning, you can change it. When you go through it, you can't. Right, okay. Right. Okay, then. Give on Gina Club. Anything, um, anything you want to add to me? Oh, yes. Um, I've got the African Culture Market, which is the 20th of August. And basically, because it's a Mosiah month, we're basically focused on Michael's Mosiah Garvey. So we've got Brother Manda Mandingo, and he's going to be talking about Marcus Mugavi um, because he was actually taught by one of Marcus Mugavi's um, sons yeah, Marcus and brought up, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. And also, there's a brother called Father Cass. He's you might have heard his music. He does speeches to music of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, yeah. and there's going to be another brother who's an artist who's actually a poet, um, he's a sculptor, he's a painter, and he's also going to be doing some, um, some work on it. Also, there's a project that I'm doing, which is um, we're trying to acquire Unit 6 and 7, which is a building that we're going to turn into a community centre with a difference. The difference is, is that we're going to have a base for natural healers, natural healing pr uh, practitioners. So whereas one natural practitioner will come once a week, there's going to be space for three natural practitioners to work alongside each other for um, five or um, seven days a week. So there'll be a regi register for natural healers that you can actually phone in, find out what, what day they're there, so you can actually make an appointment to see the natural um, practitioner. There's going to be a base for homeschooling where you can get information for homeschooling and where to go onto the website. There's a sister called Kay Johnson, who's been running her own um, um, home-based um, school. And um, she's put together a curriculum to go onto the web for homeschoolers and people who want to, who's interested in, in into showing their homeschool. Plus, there's going to be a space for Saturday school, after school, and there's workshops. There's three rooms for workshops that um, people can actually do training and um, anything else, and plus okay. the IT room. Then. Okay, so give Auntie Jane a clap. So Come thank on. You. Yeah. Um, we've got one more person, Show Shani. Okay, then what we're going to do, she, she can come in after, after the break. Show Shani, you going to. You going to mention product? Yeah, got about 30, 30 seconds, please. Okay, greetings. Uh, you see me in my colors today, it's independence. I don't know what we're independent from, but. Say it, go. <laughs> okay, my name is Shoshani. I am a holistic esthetician. For anybody that doesn't know what that is, I'm a skin and body specialist. So I do all the health humidity, keeping the body alkaline, especially. And I'm, I made a product because my brother passed off uh, stomach cancer on my daddy the year before. So, so oh, am I? <laughs> so, um, Defala, we were doing it for Anthony Leroy Anderson. I made it in memory of my brother. Um, it's been doing amazing things for pain. I mean, it was chronic pain. And we got it to the chemtrails, uh, the food, what we're eating out of the tins. You know, we, we, we're doing a healing event. I'm doing an event tomorrow. I really don't live here. I live in Jamaica. Um, but I'm on a Healing and Nations tour um, because our people are not well. And we need to, I need to educate my people. Um, about healthy lifestyle. All right, so um, I'm outside. Uh, we're having, um, that's normally 25 pound. We're having it 20 pound today because of independence. 25 back tomorrow. Okay right. then, give thanks. Outside.
Thank you. Okay, give her a clap, yeah? Okay, then. All right, then. So, we need to move quickly into the program now, because we have a brother, Daryl, waiting patiently, and he's going to drop some information on us. Now, then, the question is, right, who's heard of Daryl? Hands up. Well, uh, put your hand up. Only two people, three people heard of Daryl. That means everybody hasn't heard of him. No, then, who's heard of Les Brown? <laughs> About a handful of people heard of Les Brown. Well, trust me, Les Brown, to me personally, one of the top motivational speakers in the world by far, personally speaking. And Daryl's, to me, one of the top young motivational speakers in the UK by far. No, then, when I asked Daryl to speak, you know, um, he said yes, but at the same time, he speaks all over the place, all over the country, all hours of the night and everything. And he could say to me, listen, Doggy, you know what? I'm tired, I'm burnt out, I need to have a break. He could have said that, and he deserved a break, but he made a commitment to be here. No, then, when I speak, there's two things. A, I haven't quite painted the picture in your mind, or you don't see the value. That's all it is. You don't see the value. We need to see the value of what's taking place here, right? You need to see the value of the speakers, them, who give their time to give information. A wise man said to me, what you don't know, no will kill you, you kill others as well, based on ignorance. That was the Honorable Dr. Le Africa. Now then, this young head is a wise man. I've learned a lot from him, and I'll continue learning from him. You know, and he's, again, it's about giving. Now then, I don't have time to go into the man's personal CV right now and go into his background and this and that. We'll be here for another half an hour and only scratching the surface. No, then, for open mind, open heart, please welcome our beautiful Barra, Daryl to the front. Come on, give him a clap. Yeah, we can do better. Come on, give him a clap. Yeah. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know what's really exciting? Because only, only two or three people put their hand up to say that they, they've heard me before. Which makes me feel like I'm not popular, which is, is okay. It also means I get to share the same jokes over and over again, and none of you have heard them before, so that's, that's also cool. Um, it was interesting that a lot of you said, you know, you came for, for wisdom or for your son or inspiration. I came because Dougie said I was going to get some free food. I ain't going to lie. So I'm staying till, till the free food comes out. No, I'm joking. Um, so first of all, just thank, thank Dougie for, for allowing me to be here just to share. Just want to thank you guys for, for your time and what... I'm going to attempt to do, I've been teaching finance for over nine years now, and I'm going to try and take something I've been teaching for over nine years and, and wrap it into literally a 30, 45 minute talk. So I'm not going to be able to give you everything that I've learned over the last nine years, but I'm going to hopefully give you enough that you can implement in a very short space of time. Is that okay? Yeah? yeah? Just, just so I know, are there anyone in, is there anyone in this room that believes they have leadership qualities? Yeah? A couple of you? No one, no one else? Just, just, just three or four of you that say you've got leadership qualities. Can I, can I just encourage you that if you have got leadership qualities, you sit near the front. Le leaders lead from the front, not from the middle, mm. and, and not from the back. Mm. That, that, that was your moment to get up and move forward. Mm. That was your moment to get up and move forward. Uh -huh. That was your moment to get up and move forward. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Oh, then you find an excuse, someone's stuff is there. Okay, all right. Some of you didn't want to move because you, like, you don't like change, and change makes you feel uncomfortable. But I will say some things today that I may provoke some of you. I may step on some toes. I'm not going to apologize for anything that I say because my job is to provoke you enough to see some, some positive change. Once again, is that okay? Yeah? So, um, as, as Dougie said, my name is... Oh, in my eye. Uh, my name is Daryl Harper, and um, I've been... Just so you know, that is naturally bald. This is my natural hair. This is not man weave. I've been natural all the way my whole life. Um, but my background is actually teaching. So I used to teach for 10 very long years in a college called City of Westminster, uh, taught, taught media, filmmaking, video production, but I did have a, a fantastic education. I had a PhD, so you all, you all know what a PhD is, right? Yeah, do, do you know what it stands for? 
No, it actually stands for poor, hungry, and desperate. And I don't mean poor to a point where I didn't have any money. I mean poor to a point when I wasn't living the life that I wanted to live. I was living the life that I had to live just based on the income that I was receiving. Can any of you relate to that? Yeah, a couple of you. And just hungry and desperate to get out of the rat race. And I had very big goals, very big dreams. And I just could not see myself achieving those on my nine-to-five job. So back in December 2010, I officially sacked my boss. And a lot of people look at me and go, well, how do you sack your boss? Have any of you ever seen the show The Apprentice before? Yeah, I sent a, a picture of Alan Sugar from The Apprentice to my boss. I literally sent my boss this picture. I emailed it to him and 600 members of staff. And underneath the picture, it said, you're fired. And uh, uh, a lot of people thought that was a bit of an ego. But it actually had nothing to do with that. What happened was in August 2010, that same year, my grandfather sadly passed away. And up until that point, I never had a day off sick. I never had a day off, day, I never had a day off work in 10 years. I asked for two days off, one for the funeral. The second day just to recover. I don't know if any of you have ever planned a funeral before. It's quite a long and tiring process. And they turned around and said, no. They said, you're only entitled to one day. And then a month later, my cousin passed away. And this was not a distant cousin. This was my uncle's daughter. And I asked if I could attend the funeral. They said, no. They said, if it's not a parent, a grandparent, or a sibling, you're not allowed to attend. And I realized at that point in my life, when people pay you a salary, they feel like they have so much control over you and your time. Can you relate to that? Yeah. Yeah, well, everyone relates to that one, right? And um, I got very focused over the last six months of me being there. To be fair, I was pretty good with money anyway, but I managed to save up six, six, I managed to save up two months, two years salary. So it meant that if I didn't work for the next two years, I could still pay my bills, I could still pay my mortgage, I could still run my car, and I could still eat, because food is very important to me. Um, but one of the hardest decisions I ever made, but one of the best decisions I ever made, I honestly believe that sometimes in life, I encourage you guys to do the same, sometimes in life you have to be prepared to burn the bridge. Because if you don't burn the bridge, you always feel like you have an escape route. Whereas if you just burn the bridge, it only leaves you with two other options. And down was never an option for me. Forward was the only other option that I had. And I'll never forget one of my mentors picked me up, drove up to a college in a Rolls Royce, laid out a red carpet, bottles of champagne and balloons I don't drink. But, you know, if you're going to sack your boss, you may as well do it in style, right? And for me, it was just about taking back control over my life, my destiny and my future. And that's how I, how I left my job and went full-time into running my own business, which like I said, I've been doing for the last nine, and a half, well, nine years, three months, something like that now. Why I got involved in finance was really because of th- certain things that I had experienced in my life. Um, I don't know if any of you know this, but 72 to 73% of all family breaks up because of, breakups are because of a lack of money. And that's what happened in my family. You know, my dad wanted to have, to have more children. My mom said, we can't afford it. My dad said, we'll work it out. My mom said, we can't afford it. And my parents that were together for 18 years, married for 12 years, separated when I was 15 years old. My mom got severely depressed and she overdosed. And she was in a coma for four days. And that was tough because that... At 15 years old, like that, I became the man in the house. Um, my dad used to take me to work with him in a building site over the weekends and pay me a salary. So at 15 years old, I, start, I, was, pay, I was working with my dad to make, pay us, making, a, making an income, but he was giving me that income so I could pay the mortgage. So literally at 15 years old, I took on mortgage payments. 18 years old, the mortgage was officially in my name. I bunked school for three months just before my GCSE exams, not because I was bad, not because I was a bad student. I was just scared that when I came home, I was going to find my mum dead because she was quite suicidal at that point. So I used to hide around the estate, hide underneath, underneath my bed, not every day, but a lot of days. I used to hide underneath my bed and hide under there the whole day and wait until my mum went into the room and make it seem like I came back in the house um, in my uniform. So I did that. I, I, like I said, I bunked school for three months. But if you looked on the school register, I was actually marked in in every single class, which tells you how screwed up the whole educational system can be. Also tells you how gifted and talented that I was. Because to, to, to bunk school for three months, that's a gift. You just need to know how to operate that in the right arena. So if you've got young children that want to know how to bunk school and that get caught, cool, that's also a business opportunity. Everywhere there's a problem, there's a solution. I have a solution. And I'm joking. I ain't going to teach any of you guys how to do that. But I'm sure there's some money that can be made out of me doing that. So I, 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 like I, said, I spent 10 years in education, or teaching in education at least. And in, over the 10 years, I learned that there was four reasons why people... Do not make it financially. And do, did any of you guys bring notepad and, notepad and pen? Yeah? I, I strongly encourage you, like, if you're going to go to an event where you're going to be learning stuff, you should bring a notepad and pen because you are not going to re- remember most of the stuff that you hear. You're only going to remember 10% of what you see, hear, and read. So you should be taking notes or at least pull out your phones and write them down in there. If you get a tweet, a text message, or WhatsApp, ignore that. You're here to learn, all right? So I, I've learned that there's four reasons why people do not make it financially. One of the reasons is... There's a failure to plan, people are misinformed, people are uninformed, and I'll tell you the last one after. All right, so I said the first one is there's, there's a complete failure to plan. 
So, question for you. How many of you have ever been to a wedding at least once in your life? Yeah, I mean, even, even if it was your own wedding and you showed up to it, yeah? Yeah, how, how long is the whole wedding kind of ceremony? All, all day? So, to all day? So, so, can we say at least 12 hours from the wedding to the, the reception by the time you kick everyone out? About 12 hours, yeah? How long does it take to plan a wedding? Months, months, years. Weeks, depending on if you're doing Vegas or what have you. So registry officer, that takes days or weeks. Yeah? But on average, can we say it's going to take at least 12 months for someone to plan a wedding? Yeah? How, do any of you know how long the average retirement lasts from the moment that you kind of retire to the moment that you meet your maker? Any of you know how long that period of time is? 25 years? Okay. All right. So, so just so you know, the average man in the UK lives to 85 years old. The average lady lives to 87 years old. I do not know why women get an extra two years than, than us men. I've been told, I don't know if it's true, but I've been told that men die sooner because we want to. We've had enough. We can't take it no more. <laughs> I've also been told that women live longer because they've got to tidy up our mess. I'm not sure which one it is. But do you understand that if you retire at 85 or you retire at 65 or 67 now, and the average uh, life expectancy after that is another 20, 25 years. Do you realize that most people will put more time and effort into planning a two-week holiday than they will their retirement? Think about it. Most of you would have put more time and effort into planning two-week holiday, two-week memory, than you will the next 20 years of your retirement. Yeah? Can we all agree on that? Yeah? So there's a failure to plan. I said the second reason is people are completely... Uh, uninformed. Now, where in the whole educational system do they teach you about money? They don't, right? Yeah. What is the first thing that comes out of your pay slip before you even see it? Tax. But they never teach you basic tax laws in, 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 in school. Uh, do they teach you things like the rule of 72? Yeah, some of you are like, what? 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 Uh, I'll, I'll teach you that. Yeah. And understand this. If you don't know what the rule of 72 is and you don't have it working for you, you have it working against you. Yeah. So there's a complete, uh, people are uninformed. Now, where do you, the third thing I said is people are misinformed. Now, where do most people go to get advice about money? Financial advisors, anywhere else? Banks, friends, family, accountants. Okay, so, so let's break this down. Someone said banks. So what business are the banks in? They're in the business of making money, right? So then what business does the bank have telling you how to pay your mortgage and debts off sooner? They have none, because if they teach you how to pay your debts off sooner, it means that you pay less of an interest, which means they get less of a bonus. But yet, a lot of people go to their bank to get advice about money. Someone shouted out financial advisors. And don't get me wrong, there are some fantastic financial advisors out there. But where do a lot of them work? Or where did, well, actually, where did a lot of them work? Because a lot of them got made redundant in the bank. So you're, working for the, you're getting advice from someone who's working for the same institute that's trying to take money from you. Yeah? So the third thing is, someone mentioned um, accountants. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some fantastic accountants out there. And to be honest... If it was my aunt's an accountant, and if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where I am financially. But do you understand that accounting principles are different to wealth building principles? Accounting principles are based on what has happened, but wealth building is based on what is going to happen. Yeah? So it's a completely different concept, completely different principle. And the th last thing I heard someone shout out, friends and fr family. This is the one that always gets me the most. Why do people go to get advice from someone that's in a situation worse than theirs? Do you know what happens when one broke person gets advice from another broke person? You realize they end up broker together in company. Yeah? Do you know what that's like? That's like going to get a relationship advice from someone who's never been able to hold down a relationship. Yeah? If you are that person giving relationship advice and you've never been able to hold down a relationship, stop. Like, stop. Yeah? And then the last thing is, which I never mentioned, is the fourth thing, which is probably the one that stops people the most, is procrastination. Yeah? Most people say, do you know what? I'm not going to do it today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Or I'll do it next week. Or I'll do it next year. And that time never comes. How many of you honestly suffer from procrastination? Uh, you, so you, didn't, you have to think about that, some of you. Your hand went up quick. Some of you are thinking, do I suffer from procrastination? I'm not sure. Yeah? So th those are typically the four reasons why people do not make it financially. Yeah? So what I'm going to cover, in a, like I said, I've only got a very short space of time, is I typically teach something called a fi fi becoming financially free. And I cover four things which is becoming debt-free, the basics of savings, the bu building an instant estate, and retirement. And like I said, I'm going to take what I'll typically do over an all-day seminar 
and wrap it into, thir into 45 minutes. So, like I said, I'm not going to be able to give you anything, everything, but I'll give you hopefully enough that you can apply it or provoke some action. We can at least book a time to actually get together with one of us. So, first thing I want to talk about is um, before I even talk about becoming debt free or any of those things, one of the things that I've learned is you have to start off with what your goals are first. You can, you can spend all the time in your life going to make a lot of money, but if you have no purpose for it, there's no point to it. Yeah, you've got to, any, any success book you read, I don't think I've ever read a success book where the first chapter is not talking about what are your goals? You know, what is your emotional pull? There's got to be something that you're either, you're either emotionally pulled towards something or you're running from something. You're either running from poverty or you're running towards freedom. It's one, it's one of the two, yeah? So for some of us, it's about you want to make some extra money because you want to go on holiday. And could I encourage you, that for those of you that like holidays, and I'm guessing there's quite a few in the room, yeah, take a holiday because you just want to take a holiday, not because you're trying to escape from the life that you currently live. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, because some of you will take a holiday because you're trying to escape from what's happening over here, but you, when you come back, the same issues, the same challenges, the same financial struggles are still here. Yeah. Second thing is, you know, some of us is about finan becoming financially free, and financial freedom means something different to everyone. Actually, do some of you mind just shouting out what financial freedom means to you specifically? Shout out. Everything Choice. Paid everything paid for. Is zero. It zero. Is it like zero in the bank or everything paid for? Because some, of, if that's the case, some people are financially free already. Yeah, that's called broke though, conscious. Uh, any, anything else? So we've got is, have it, have everything paid for. Choice. Anything else? No mortgage. No debts. Yeah, I think it, it means all of those things. To me... It just simply means having a large sum of money saved and invested where I could just live off the interest for the rest of my life. That freedom of choice. How many of you like that? Yeah, because I'm starting to see some of the Colgate and the Acrofresh smiles coming out now. Yeah. For some of us, it's things you want to do for your family. You want to be able to give your children a better start in life. You want to be able to give them the start that you may never have had. You want to give them the future that you may not have, but you just want to give them a better start. For some people, it could be something material like a car. For others... It's about being able to give back to a good cause or a charity. And for some people, it's about getting a deposit for a home or maybe maybe just paying the mortgage that you currently have off sooner. Then there's going to be some people in the room that making extra money will just give you that security. You just want financial security, you want peace of mind, or it's about just erasing debts. Yeah, can we agree that all those things, though, are going to cost money? Yeah, all these goals that you have are going to cost money. And what I want you to do, just for a moment, think about one of the goals that you currently have in your life. Put a monetary figure on that goal and now ask yourself, doing what you are currently doing, how long is, how long is it going to take for you to achieve it? I'm guessing by the, some of the looks on some of your faces, the answer is too long or never going to happen. Is that, is that fair to say in a lot of cases? Yeah. So it means that something has to change. What you, ha what you have to understand is that everything that you currently do between 9 and 5 o'clock, that is to pay your bills. Everything you do after 5 o'clock that is an investment in your future. I'll say that again. Everything you currently do between 9 and 5 o'clock, that is to pay your bills. That is your survival money. Everything you do after 5 o'clock, that is an investment in your future. The question is, what are you investing in after 5 o'clock? Is it watching Dead Enders or Tell Live Vision? Or is it you investing into some sort of business that's going to help you generate more money for your family and your future generation to come? Yeah. So let, let's talk about becoming debt-free. And we look at the current economy, and these are some of the things I'm going to tackle. So would you agree that you cannot turn on the TV today, open up a newspaper, listen to the radio about hearing, seeing, or reading something about finance? Can we all agree on that? Yeah? So you see headlines like 8 million uh, Britons have no savings, or 8 million people are one paycheck away from being homeless. We all, all know somebody like this. The typical UK household has less money than last year. How many of you feel like that now, that you're making the same income that you made last year, but because everything has gone up in price, you feel like you've got less? Yeah, show of hands. Be honest, be honest. We're family. There's no judgment in here. Yeah. How, how many of you remember when, when bus fare was 10p? Yeah. yeah? For five, you, don't know, you don't need to expose yourself. You don't have to expose your age. Some people say that five. Some of you remember it was a three pen, fr, pen, what was it? Fruit pee? Three penny piece? Fruitpence? See, I don't even know what it was. I wasn't born. I just heard about it. Yeah? How many of you remember we get penny sweets for a penny? Yeah? You do realize when you get, when, the, when inflation hits penny sweets, you're in bad shape. Yeah? Actually, how do you remember when you could go shopping and come back home with food? Yeah? But you come back with less food 
and you've got to pay for your Tesco's or Sainsbury's bags now. So do you do, re you do realize that if you are not making more money, you are always going to ha have less? Because as everything else goes up in price, if your income is staying the same, you're always going to fall short. Yeah, I'll say something else. If you have ever been in your overdraft, at least once in your life, take that as your first warning sign that something needs to change. Yeah, that you currently do not make enough money or you need to get someone to help you with your finances because your overdraft is not your money. Yeah, and a lot of you will argue and say, yes, it is, it's my money. No, it's not. No, it's not. Go into your overdraft. Don't put any deposits into your account for a decent period of time and you'll find out when they send Westcott to your house, hopefully none of you know who Westcott is, but they are a debt collection company, you'll find out that actually was never your money in the first place. Take that as your first warning sign that something needs to change in your life, yeah? 32% um, of people have no savings whatsoever and 9 million people are in serious debt. Do we all know somebody like that? Yeah? I'll give you another stat that I was looking at the other day. Do any of you know that have never heard me speak before? Do any of you know how much it costs to raise a child from the age of 0 to 21? Any of you have a guess? A oh, wooly. Uh, give, 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 now, give me a figure. From the age of 0 to 21, how much does it cost? Sorry. How much does it cost per day to raise a child from the age of 0 to 21? Have a guess. How much? How much? Shout it out, shout it out. Have a guess, have a guess. I don't move on until someone guesses. Got 20 pounds a day? How much? 100 pounds? No, a day, a day. A day. A thousand pounds a day? How many children you got? You got some expensive children. It costs, it costs on average, 30 pounds and 24p to raise a child from, per day from the age of zero to 21. That's over 11 grand a year. That's over 231,000 pounds between the age of zero to 21 that your children are going to cost you or have costed you. Yeah? So if you were ever thinking about not having children, there is a contraception tablet right there that they're going to cost you 231,000 pounds. But here's the next question. For those of you that don't have children, what happened to your 231,000 pounds? Let's move on. Let's move on. I'm not going to ask. Let's move on. Yeah? But you're wondering where it is, though, right? So it's all about shrewd marketing. So one of the greatest market employers of all time was taking the word debt and renaming it credit. You've taken this negative word and you've renamed it something positive. Because we all like to be in credit, right? You like to be in credit with your bills. You like to be in credit um, with your mobile phone. And we just like being credit. Do you realize that when they do a credit score on you, it's not a credit score? It's actually a debt score. They're doing a score to see how much debt you've been in and if you've been able to pay it off. So for example... Do you realize that? You cannot get a mortgage if you have never been in debt. Yeah? You cannot get a mortgage if you have not been in debt. So you can have £100,000 in savings. You have never been in debt in your life. You have consistently put money away and you've got £100,000 there and you make enough to be able to afford a mortgage, but they won't give you one if, unless you've been in debt. You have to prove that you've been in debt. Yeah? And that you can manage debt before you can even get, into, get a mortgage right now. It's changed from years ago. Some of you thinking, has, has it changed that much? Back in the day, you could put a mirror up in front of your face, go into the bank, and if it fogged up, you can get a mortgage. Yeah, you just had to prove that you were grieving. Now, you have to actually prove that you can afford it, which actually makes more sense, to be fair. But you have to go into debt. And it's interesting that the credit cards are always taught, called something very positive. So like the freedom card. There's nothing free about being in debt. Or they call it the reward card. There's nothing rewarding about being in debt. But yet, if they called it what it should really be called, like the go broke card, most people would never take it. Yeah, and I'm not talking about, and don't get me wrong, I'm not talking, there's a difference between good debt and bad debt. There are two different things. There are people that are in the room that you'll go, in, you'll get into debt, you'll use a credit card, but you'll pay it off straight away. We're talking about people who allow yourself to spiral into that debt. I've met people that have paid off, bought a house on a credit card and sold it, flipped it and made money. I'm not encouraging any of you guys to do that. It's a lot harder to do that now. But I know people that have done that. I know people that have gone on holiday for free on credit cards because they've used the air miles um, and you, you, the fact that you get insurance. But I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people that have, you've allowed yourself to spiral into this revolving debt and you're not getting out of it anytime soon. Yeah. So, quick quiz, quiz for you. Let's imagine you have £3,000 on the credit card at 20.9% APR. Every month, you pay off the minimum of 2% or £5, whichever is greater, and you don't make any new purchases, so you only have the £3,000 to pay off. For those of you that have never seen this before, don't spoil it. How long will it take for you to pay off this loan? A, 19 years, B, 90 years, or C, 130 years. How many of you are saying A, 
19 years. How many of you are saying B, 90 years? How many of you are saying C, 130 years? How many of you are not going to put your hand up no matter what I ask you? Let's try this again. How many of you are saying A? How many of you are saying B? How many of you are saying C? How many of you are going to teeth the money and run? Because once again, hands up. Okay, let's, let's do this now. Can everyone stand up for me, please? Everyone stand up. Because we'll do name and shame. Because you, got, you guys couldn't, you can't be coachable. I just put your hand up. Everyone stand up. Everyone stand up. Even those of you at the back, everyone stand up. Everyone stand up. Everyone stand up, please, for a moment. Just stand up. Stand up for me, please. Be coachable. Stand up for a moment. Stand up for a moment. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you stand up for me, please? Stand up for me. Okay. For those of you that are saying A, take a seat. Okay. For those of you that are saying B, take a seat. Well, I like the way the rest of you looked around and see how many people are going to sit down with you. And those of you that are saying C, take a seat. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And you are running off with the money. <laughs> Your D. That was never an option, my friend. Uh, you know, you're always one in the room, innit? Take 90 years to pay that debt off. Yeah? Don't get, that's 90 years. Don't get excited, conscious. Like, 90 years to pay off my debt. That's nothing to be excited about. <laughs> yeah? Um, how much interest are you going to pay? Three grand, nine grand, or 23 grand? It kind of goes without saying you're going to pay 23 grand. In, on interest. So imagine you had £3,000, you paid minimum payments. It's going to take you over 90 years to pay off, go conscious. And it's going to take you £23,000 in interest. You're going to pay. You know what the interesting thing is? That most people will do that. You know why? Because it's comfortable. It's comfortable to pay £5 a month. It's comfortable to pay £15, £20 a month. It's comfortable to pay minimum payments. But your minimum payments cost you a lifetime. And you know, what's, you know what the interesting thing is? If for those of you that have got children, you think to yourself, it's okay, I'm going to die. I'm going to die and that debt's going to die with me. Do you know where that debt goes? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? That goes to your children. Oh, let me, so you ask how, how can it? So let me, let me ask you a question. If, say for example, you lend uh, £50,000 to a friend of yours. Yeah? And they said, I'm going to pay you back in a year. So you had £50,000, you lent it. And God forbid that person passed away. Do you still wish you, do you still want your 50 grand? Okay, the bank still wants their free grand. Your children. It comes out of your estate. It comes out of your estate. So when you pass away, there's things that come out of your estate. So that's where it comes from. Yeah? They still want their money. So you might think to yourself, oh, it's okay, the debt will die with me. No, 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 no. You die, but the debt carries on because they still want their money. Yeah, and they come for your family. So for those of you that think, oh, it's okay. For those of you that got parents that, are, that may be in debt, just expect that to come to you. Yeah, expect that to come to you. That kind of left a somber moment there. So the golden rule of credit is pay off your debt in the shortest possible time, which sounds quite simple. And the first step to becoming debt-free is to spend less money than you earn. Yeah, do you know what most people do? They spend more money they have. Actually, what most people do, they spend money they don't have to buy things they don't need to impress people they don't even like. Yeah? That is what most people will do. Yeah? Thank you for the one clap. You, I'm going to bring you everywhere with me. Yeah? You can come with me. You can be my, my crowd. I like them. My entourage. So you got to spend less money than you earn. Because what most people do, when most people get a pay rise, what do you do? When your income goes up, what happens? You spend more. Why? Because you got more. So you spend more. So you end up in the same situation that you were in before. So I, I, I'll give you an example. How many of you have ever saved money in some area of your life? So you may have had a mobile phone contract and it was 35 pounds and now you've managed to cut it down to 25 pounds or whatever. Any of you ever done something like that before? What, give me an example. What did you save money on? Yeah, let's go you first. Let me go to you first. Mm -hmm. And you cancelled the contract? And you saved yourself how much? How much did you save? A month. A month. So you saved 100. How much did you save from how much you was paying and how much you got reduced to? Mm -hmm. Paid off the lot. Yeah, and you was paying how much on it was you paying? If you don't mind sharing. Can't remember. Long time ago. Anyone else done anything like that with a mobile phone? So how, how, so, cut in half. so how much did you save a month? 20 pound a month? 20 pound a month. So the question, the, my question then was always, so what happened to your 20 pound? Oh. oh. 
Uh. Mm -mm. What a way the boy exposed me. Yeah. But that's what happens with most of us. We save money in some area of our life. We get excited because we save £20 on a SIM card. Or we've paid off this, this insurance or we cancelled this. And actually, if that money doesn't show up positively somewhere else in your life, it was pointless you saving the money. It was pointless you saving £20. And I'm not just picking on you, Supreme, because there's loads of people who have done that. I've done that before in my life. That you've saved the money in one area, but it's not getting used positively in another area. It's not like you're putting it into savings. You're not putting it into an investment. You're not using it to pay off your debt. It's just evaporated like it was never there, like it never existed. That's pointless. You do realize that. You may as well have just kept paying the money to that company because it ain't showing up anywhere else in your life. So you may as well have just put it somewhere else. Anytime you save money in some area of life, you better be putting that somewhere else positive. And positive, once again, let me just quite qualify that because some of you, positive will be going out raving or positive will be a new outfit or positive will be a new hairdo, positive is something that's going to help you towards your future. Does, does that make sense? Yeah? So, how, how many of you have a, uh, have a property right now? And how many of you would like to know how to pay that off sooner? Okay. How many of you are planning on getting a property one day? And how many of you would like to know how to pay it off sooner? Okay. So, uh, this is something called mortgage, mortgage acceleration. Yeah? I'm showing you, I want to show you how to pay off your mortgage sooner. So, Every single month of the year has four weeks. We do not realize that. And once you get to 28, you've got four weeks. Yeah? Some of those months have got 31 days. Some of them have got 30 days. Yeah? So if you were to add up all those days after 28, if you were to add every single one of those days up, it comes up to 29. Does that make sense? Yeah? Which means that somewhere along the lines, we've lost an entire month. Yeah? So for example, there's 12 months in the year. There are four weeks in the average month. But 12 months times 4 weeks equal 48 weeks. But it's actually 52 weeks in a year because there's some five-week months. So it means you've lost the entire month. Does that, is, that make, is that clear? Yeah? So the question is, well, where did that other month go? So let me give you the scenario and then explain how the concept works. Someone here bought a property for £150,000. They obviously did not buy that in London because you are not going to get a house in London for £155,000. You get a shed maybe in London for that amount. They took out the mortgage over a 25-year term. At the end of that term... They pay £208,000 in interest and £358,000 in total. So they've literally paid for the house twice. Yeah? Family comes along and buys a house next door, gets exactly the same offer. £150,000 over 25 years. However, this family were able to pay their mortgage off five years sooner and save themselves fifty-two pounds in interest. How do they do that? They pay their mortgage every two weeks. So imagine this. Let's say, for example, your mortgage is £1,000 a month. What they do is they pay £500 every two weeks because they're paying their mortgage every two weeks, it actually works out to 26 half payments. Divide 26 by two works out to 13 full payments. So essentially what you're doing is you're making an extra payment a year, but it just won't feel like that. Is that clear? Yeah, do any of you know anyone that gets, that gets paid every four weeks? Yeah, if you get paid four weeks, you get paid 13 payments a year, right? It says, as opposed to 12. So it's like paying, making an extra payment on your mortgage, but once again, it will not feel like that. Now you speak to your banker, you tell them you want to do that. Um, some of them will turn around and say, you can't. You can do that. It's, it's, you can legally do that. So what happens is, for those of you that have got a property, once again, I encourage you to do this. What happens is, you may, for example, pay your mortgage at the beginning of the month. You may pay the mortgage on your first of every month. However, the mortgage company doesn't actually need your money to the 28th of the month, for example. So as long as you've made the payment by that date, you are fine. But what you're going to have, to, they'll tell you that you can't set up a direct debit to go out every two weeks, but you can set up a standing order to go out every two weeks. So, for example, you can set up a standing order to go out every second Friday, and then you'll hit every single week of the year. Yeah? Is that clear? And then what happens is the first payment you make, so let's say it's £500 every two weeks, the first £500 you pay will go towards the balance. So that means the balance has been reduced. So when you go to make the second payment, that will, because the balance has been reduced, it means the interest is reduced, so you're eating into more of the interest. That alone will knock off five to eight years off on your mortgage. I had a client that did this, and to be fair, this had nothing to do with me. They did this before I met them. They did this and overpaid their mortgage by 200 pounds a month. 25 year mortgage paid off in seven years, seven or 10 years, I can't remember which one, by doing that and overpaying by two, 200 pounds a month. The only thing, for those of you that are gonna do this, you need to phone your bank, ask them for your mortgage account number, yeah, so the mortgage account number, and you need to make your standing order to that account number. Yeah, and you just need to find out what day of the month they need the payment by. Uh, once again, how many of you have a property now? 
How many of you are going to do that Monday morning? We shall see. Okay. So you see, I don't understand that because when you get information that's going to help you pay your mortgage off sooner, or Monday afternoon, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, most people will hear information and never apply it. And then you wonder why you're struggling financially. Do you understand that your success is going to be based on your speed of implementation? How quickly you can take the information and apply it. Because to actually to stand here and teach and then for you not to do anything is actually a waste of your time. It's 100% a waste of my time. And the old ways don't always work. Yeah, because the old ways will keep you paying your mortgage for 25 years. But if you knew that you could knock off 52 grand on interest, why would you not do that? So you're complaining that you're where you are financially. You're complaining that you don't have enough money. You're complaining about all these things. And someone tells you to pay your mortgage every two weeks because it's going to save you money, but you're comfortable in the old ways. For me, and I'm going to say this, I'm very real. So I, 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 are you okay if I just say what I want to say? Say it how I want to say it. Say it with love. That's foolishness. That is 100% foolish. That's stupid. No, no, and I don't care what anyone has to say because you know what? When I'm gone, I'm gone and I'm going to go and help some other family. But I'm standing here telling you what you can do that's going to change your life and you don't want to do it because it's comfortable. That's foolish. And I'll just say, if this is the last time I speak for you, Dougie, yeah, I'm sorry, but I want to get it on camera. It's foolish. It's stupid. It's foolish. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Yeah? Sorry, go on. Sorry, you know you said you pay your mortgage every two weeks, to pay it every two weeks, but your mortgage normally you pay it monthly. I'm, I don't have a mortgage yet, but so for the people who pay it monthly, it, surely you have to raise that amount to pay it every two weeks. No, 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 no. If the mortgage is £1,000 a month, you're, you're half in the payment, so you're paying £500 every two weeks. That's still £1,000 a month. I'm not saying pay a... So your mortgage is £1,000 a month, I'm not saying pay a thousand pounds every two weeks. I'm saying paying five hundred pounds every two weeks. It's the same amount of money. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying obviously the end of the month is the end of the month, isn't mm -hmm. it? Four weeks. So that gives you that leeway to make the whatever you need to pay your mortgage at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. Normally your wages come end of the month. So what I'm saying is by by the second week in the month you might not have the readies. So what you do, so it's, a, it's the same amount no, of money. I know it's the same amount. So all you do, all you do, what I encourage some people to do, is as soon as you get paid, transfer, have another account. And let's say you call that account your mortgage account. You transfer the money that you would pay into your mortgage into that account. So that, mortgage, that money's already come out of your account now and you set a standing order up from that account. So let's say, for example, I get paid. My money automatically gets paid into my mortgage account. And from this, so now what's left in my current account is what I normally would have had left after my mortgage was paid anyway. Does that make sense? And then from this account, I set up a standing order to go out every two weeks. Is that clear? Yeah. Cancel that and you set up a standing order every two weeks. Yeah? Is that clear? If you need to speak about it, come and speak to me on it on one-on-one. -on -one. So you had your hand up? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to open the question questions at the end. At the end. So we've got about another five minutes' time. So... Right. Hold on five minutes, I've got another four sections. Yeah, no, but we're going to open the question and answer sessions, yeah? Okay. In about five minutes' time. Okay. 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 Yeah? We'll do that at the end. We'll talk about that at the end. Yeah? So, in five minutes, go through three sections. Let me see how I can do this. Right, let, me cut out the, let me cut out the savings part. Let me cut this out. Uh, no, no, let me go through this. Huh? I'll go, I'll go, go through it. I'll go through it. I'll go through it. All right, so, basics of savings. So, this is something called the rule of 72. Now, this isn't ours. You can Google it. It's basically an old banking principle. And what it does, it approximates how long it takes for your money to double or your debt to double at a given interest rate. So it means it can either work for you or it can work against you. And if it's not working for you, it's working against you. Yeah? So once again, if you've seen this before, don't say anything. So let's say, for example, every single one of you have got £10,000 saved in the bank. Small, you've got £10,000 saved in the bank. All right, some of you are looking at me like I've stolen money from your account. All right, and who, who do some of you bank with? Who do you save with? Halifax or Halifax, as some people call them. Uh, Satan there, HST for me. Uh, like Sharkley's, kind of any of them banks there. So you've got £10,000 saved in, in Halifax at 3%. For those of you who have never seen this before, how long do you think it will take for your £10,000 to double and turn into £20,000? If you had to guess, how many years? At 3%, £10,000, how long before it turns into £20,000? Have a guess. I've got five minutes, so I'll guess real quick. 30 years, 30 years, anything else? 
take 24 years for that money to double. Yeah, how you work that out? 72 divided by the interest rate. So three goes into 72, 24 times. And then what happens, your money doubles in 24 year cycles. So after 48 years, you've got 40,000 pounds. Is that exciting of you? No, too, too long to wait for that amount of money, right? And if you don't think it's too long, take the age that you are now, put 48 years on top of that, and how old are some of you going to be? Some of you don't want to say it, but you're going to be pushing up daisies, right? I mean, e even if you think about it like this, if you had one pound sitting in the bank, it's going to take 24 years for your one pound to turn into two pounds. 24 years for 10p to turn into 20p, and after 48 years, you've got a whopping 40p. Kind of hits home a bit more now, right? Now, say you double your rate of return from three to six. If you double this to six, you would assume that this should double to 80,000 pounds, right? Because if it doubles at the top, it should really double at the bottom. But see, money doesn't work like that. You have this thing called compound interest. So what happens now, six goes into 72 12 times, and now your money doubles in 12-year cycles. So 12, 24, 36, 48. So even though you've doubled at the top, you've actually quadrupled at the bottom, because your money doubles more times, it du doubles faster within the same period of time. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah? Now let's imagine... Let's imagine you can get 12% return on your money. And a lot of you are thinking you can't. You can. You just need to know where to put your money. What happens now? Your money doubles every six years, which is a lot better. After 24 years, you've got 160,000. If you had to guess how much you think you'd have after 48 years, have a guess. Lady in the black with the phone. Have a guess. Got a million. Lady next. You've seen this before, though, haven't you? No, no, no. no. Lady next. No, lady next. You've seen it before. Gentleman with the beige. 260, it's have 2.56 million. That's the power of compound interest because now your money is doubling a lot faster now. It means that people want higher rates of return on their money. So let me give you a real practical example. Uh, how many of you have got children? Wow, some of you look embarrassed. Okay. <laughs> Once again, let's try this again. How many of you have got children that you're not claiming? <laughs> wow. Your hand actually went up when I said it. All right, so imagine if you had 10,000 pounds sitting in an account the day your youngest child was born, by the time they got to 18, there'd be 80,000 pounds sitting in that account. University fees covered. By the time they got to 24, there's six figures sitting in that account. Home deposit covered. Set them up for life. Yeah, but once again, information will change your situation, but you've got to have the right information to change your situation, right? So this is a rule of 72 working for you. Let me explain to you, though, how banks get this principle to work for them and against you. Say, for example, you borrow 10,000 pounds from the bank and you pay them back on minimum payments on a credit card or a store card, and that's at 12%, after six years, you're going to pay the bank at least £20,000 in interest, but you still owe them the original £10,000. 12 years, you're paying £40,000 in interest, but you still owe them the original £10,000. So you can see what's going to happen after 48 years, right? Now, what happens if you're a saver, so say, for example, everyone over this side of the room, you're all savers, what the bank will do is take all of your money, give you 3%, Lend it to everyone over this side of the room on a credit card at 12%. They make all of this money from your money. They give you back £40,000 to say thank you. None of that money was theirs in the first place, but they keep the difference. They do all of that in broad daylight. Yeah, that's where the term daylight robbery comes from. Yeah, and if you think about it, you don't get 3% on your savings right now, do you? Well, what do you get on your savings? 0.5% or 0. nothing percent. Yeah, credit cards are not 12%, are they? How much are credit cards? No, 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 I'm coming to pay. 20 Okay, wow, some of you said that with some real fixation. Yeah, 30, 29.9, Vanquist, 39.9. So you can see the banks are actually making more money from your money because the spread between how you save and how they lend your money is a lot wider. I'll give you something else that will make you feel quite sick. If you've got a credit card for the same bank that you save with, you are technically borrowing your own money at a higher interest rate. I'm going to let that one settle for a moment. This is one of the things I believe they should be teaching people from a younger age. Do you realize that you spend over 14,000 hours in education learning how to go and work hard for money, but never teach you how to get money working hard for you? They teach you things like algebra. Show, show of hands, how many of you have knowingly and willingly used algebra since you left school? One person, two people in the whole room, three people. You didn't even want to put your hand up because you were delayed, right? But three people in the entire room, and most of us didn't even want to use it when we were in school, right? How many of you have dissected a frog since you left school? Yeah, I'm talking about not seasoned chicken, dissect frog, Yeah? But yet, we've all used money, right? But yet, they never teach us how money works. Yeah? So it's about learning how to get this principle to work for you instead of against you. So it's one of my favorite slides. Higher cost of waiting. 
So let's, let's imagine that every single one of you in this room is 25 years old. <clears throat> You're all 25, right? Some of you lied, obviously. And let's imagine from the age of 25, you decided that you were going to start saving £100 a month. And you were going to get 7% return on your money, which is not great. And if you're thinking about investing, you need to get at least 8% return on your money for it to work for you. If you started doing that at the age of 25, by the time you got to 65 years old, you'd have £264,000. Question for you. If you had no mortgage, you had no debts, your children were independent of you financially, could you retire on £264,000? Yeah? Yeah? Are you a little vexed? You've got no mortgage, no debts. All you've got to think about is bills and food. Yeah? Because you do realize the average pension is going to pay you £110 a week, right? Yeah? So the average pension pays you £110 a week. Average care home costs somewhere between £500 to £1,000 per week. Yeah? If you go to a place where, where people have dementia, it costs £873 per night. So you should be all right with that, right? Now, let's say you said you decided that you was going to wait one year. No, let's use the right word. Let's say you decided that you, say you procrastinated. And said, you know what? I'm not going to start saving when I'm 25. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I'm 26 years old before I start saving. But you wait in one year, you have lost 19,000 pounds of your potential savings. I said, you know what? I'm going to enjoy my 20s. I'm going to start saving when I'm in my 30s. I'm going to wait until I'm 30. By you, time you, by you wait until you're 30, you have lost almost 83,000 pounds of your potential savings. And some people will say, do you know what? Life begins at 40. I'm going to start saving when I get to 40 years old. You haven't doubled the time, but you've lost more than double the amount of money on your potential savings. Yeah? Now, does, does that mean it's too late for you? No. Does it mean it's too late? It means that you just got to do more. You've got to do it faster. Yeah? You've got to do it a lot faster. For those of you that have got children or plan to have children at some point in your life, I'd encourage you to be your child's biggest role model. And I say that where you have to start, you have to teach them to start saving from a very young age. Yeah, you, 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 you've got by, and when I say you've got to tell them, you've got to show them. Yeah, because they can, they, they can, you can tell them all day long to do X, Y, and Z. But if they don't see you doing it, they're going to follow what, you see, what they see as opposed to what you tell them. They should not be looking at people on TV and saying, oh, that person's my biggest role model. They should be looking at you and saying, you know, I see my mom, I see my dad save consistently. And then they copy what you do. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay then. Right. What we're going to do now, uh, we're going to open up for question and answer session. So I noticed some people had some burning questions. It was you. You had one. And it was other couple of people um, for about 15, 20 minutes. So people can ask some, um, some questions. So we we'll start with the sister first. We'll let people know your name, please and ask the question. Can I just say something before you do that? If there's something I don't know, I will tell you straight up I don't know. There's certain things that I may not be able to answer because I, cause I'm regulated by the FCA. There's certain things that I may not be able to say. I might have to tell you to come and see me privately to have that conversation. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, I will not baffle you with, with crap. I'll tell you straight up if I don't know something. But I will get the answer for you. But come. Hi, my name's Naomi. Hi, Naomi. <laughs> Everyone say hi, Naomi. <laughs> Oh, have, some, have some manners, char. <laughs> that, you got, that you were brought up good. <laughs> um, so my question was about the mortgage accelerator slide. Um, could you that apply that to other types of debt, like 100%. student debt? Okay. 100%. And then the second question I had, is there any point saving if you are in debt? Because it's a good question. Kind of count. It, yeah, it depends. It really depends. Because, for example, someone can, someone, if you've got £18,000 on a credit card, Sorry, you've got 18% on your credit card and you've got debt on there and you're going to be saving at 0.5%. The quickest way to make 18% return on your money is to pay off your credit card. Yeah. However, however, I also believe that you should be saving at the same time because you could, you could spend all your time paying off your debts and then something happens to you financially and you have no emergency fund, you're going to have to go back into the credit card to get yourself out of debt again. To get, so you end up in that same situation. So I believe you, I personally believe that you should be doing both. I didn't get to go, go through that slide. That you should be saving at least 10% of your money every month anyway. Regardless, you save at least 10% of what you make, but then you also pay off the debts at the same time. Because you never want to leave yourself in a situation whereby, okay, all my money's going towards my debts. I ain't saving a penny. Now I get, and I have to fly out of the country in an emergency, and I'm having to use my credit card, and now you're back to square one. Does that, does that make sense? So I, believe, I personally believe you should do both. Save a bit and pay off some of the debts at the same time. Yeah? Okay. Does that, does that answer your question? 
Okay. Anybody got any questions they want to um, to ask Brother Daryl? Okay. Just to um, clarify that one I was asking before. Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help grow you. <laughs> um, no, I just, for people who don't have a lot of money at the moment, right? but if you have a mortgage and you've just got your mortgage, mm -hmm. like you've got the money for your mortgage, that's it. So to do that changeover, what you're saying, do it every two weeks, surely you would need another... You might have to have a little buffer. Yeah. But it's pretty it's the same. It's literally the same money every month. Yeah, yeah. But you need a buffer. You might have to, to a little buffer, but you've got twelve over. months to get the buffer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That answered my question. Yeah. So you might have you, but for most people, you won't notice that. You really don't notice it. Anyone that I've had do that process, mm -hmm. they have not noticed the extra money because it's two weeks, it's all falls within the same month. But for most people, do you know the interesting thing about most people that I've experienced? And most people, if I go through their spent their their actual budget. I will save them about three to five hundred pounds by looking at their spending habits. Just by looking, a lot of a lot of you will have wealth sitting there within your income that you have coming in now, but you have it going elsewhere. Yeah. So, for example, have any of you? We're family. We share. Yeah. So there's there's no judgment in here. Have any of you ever bought food when you're at work? Like you're out at lunchtime, you buy food. Yeah. How much would you say you spend on a day on food on lunch? Three pound fifty. Anyone else? So now because she said three fan fifty, none of you want to say anything more. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Alright, like rah, rah, she spent three fifty. Alright. Three pound forty nine. Um so I I used to spend I used to spend ten pounds a day on lunch. Yeah. So I used to on the way to lunch, I used to eat at a restaurant every day, because I'm I'm flashy like that. Um, that was the only place that had decent food. But on the way to the restaurant, I'd go and buy food from the chip shop to give me enough energy to get to the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Then after I've left the restaurant, after I bought food there, I'd buy I'd go past the, another food shop, I'd buy something else to get back to work. Then, because I used to teach, we had all these breaks, so me and, me and Blueberry Muffins were best friends. <laughs> and they did patties at work. And then if I got on a train to work, I'll get off one stop early to go to the shop to buy food, then go home and eat. Bear in mind, I used to train, so I used to do gymnastics and martial arts, so I was training, so I was always eating. I worked out that I was spending 250, 250 odd pounds a month on food, on lunch, mm. yeah? And then I changed my whole spending habits where I decided I was going to start making food on a Sunday, cook it up for the week. I went from 250 odd pound a month to spending 50 pound a month on lunch and dinner by going to the meat market and buying my food. Getting up at three o'clock in the morning to go to the meat market, buying enough meat, spending 50 pound that would last me a month and a half to feed four people. That was me, my next door neighbor and her two children because I, I used to get her to cook for me and I used to buy the food because I'm smart like that. <laughs> And then she realized how much money I was making, so she said that she didn't want to cook for me no more. She wanted to work with me instead. So then I started dating her, and then that worked. And then, we, <laughs> then we broke up, so she stopped cooking. But it's you know, <laughs> all good. It's all good. But we're still friends. We're still friends. All right. We're good. So, but no, my point being is if you actually went through your budget, if you went through your spending habits and you asked yourself, let me actually, let me ask you this. If, if you were homeless today, if you were homeless tomorrow, what would be the two most important things you would need? So some shelter and what else? And some food and food. food yeah. yeah. So that means everything else in your life to a certain degree is a luxury. Now I'm not saying you've got to live under candlelight, but everything else in your life is a luxury. You got Sky TV, that's costing money. You ain't, you ain't watching all those channels on Sky. But you're paying for all of them. And if you're struggling financially and your head's your head's in the bucket, you don't need any of that stuff. Because you have to ask yourself, what are your priorities? Yeah, if you spend more money, for example, on your head than you put into savings, there's an issue. If you spend more money on buying clothes than you put into savings, there's an issue. Your priorities are all jacked up. If you spend more money on going out raving than you put into savings, there's an issue. Your priorities are all jacked up. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, you can argue with me about that if you want. You can argue with me outside after I eat all day long. I'll <laughs> argue with you about it. But you ain't going to win that one. Yeah? So, next question. Okay. Anybody got any questions to want to ask? Yeah. I think that they want it for the recording. All right, my question is... Uh, like your hair, by the way. It looks cool. Say your name. Sayom. Say, hi, Sayom. Sayom. Yeah. Sayom. 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 Yeah. Hi, Sayom. Sayom. <laughs> so say it right? Greetings to everybody. Um, my question is on a different level. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about money. We've been brought up with money as, um, you know, it's like the lifeblood. 
in that sense of how we feel when we have it or don't have it, right? How would you say generating money related to the fact that it's also called currency and there is an energy about money, right? How do you see the energy of money different to the physical representation of it, right? Okay. In the, and relating that to how you generate money. Okay. Let me see if I can answer that. <laughs> yeah, I'll do my best. Yeah? I might have to phone a friend. <laughs> All right. So there's, there's a reason why currency is called currency. It's supposed to flow like a current. It's supposed to flow. And one of the things I've learned is money likes company and money likes friends. And that's the best way to say it. If I look at money like, I, I, I don't worship money, I don't love money, I just love what it does. It gives you, it's, I love the choices that it gives me. Yeah, that's how you should lo love, see money. Don't ever love money, just love what it does for you, the choices that it gives to you. Yeah? But I look at it, if you looked at money like it was a person, if someone was to disrespect you, what would you do? Actually, I don't know if I want to ask you what you do, because you gave me that look like I thump him. Now, what would you, what would you do? Yeah. You don't want to interact with them, you may disrespect them back, or you may just leave their company, right? That's how money is. When you disrespect money, it doesn't stay in your pocket. It ends up flowing into somebody else's pocket, yeah? And I see it very much like that. I don't love money, I don't worship money, but I respect it. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned that I worked with my dad on a building site from when I was, it's actually not 15, I started working with him when I was four years old on a building site. Obviously, you can't do that now. It's a little bit like child abuse, actually, to be fair. But I loved it. He taught me how to value money. I, did, I learned I had to work, work for money, yeah? So I valued it. And because of that principle, I learned how to respect it. And because I respected it, it seemed to just flow towards me. Don't get me wrong, you can't just sit down. I'm a firm believer also. You can't just get down on your knees and pray and say, Lord, just give me money, bring it, come, bring it, come, bring it, come, amen. It doesn't work like that because a lot of us, especially those people that go to church or wherever it is you go, you get on your knees and you pray for stuff, yeah? But it, it says in the Bible, knock, seek, and ask. Yeah. All of those things are action words. They're all adjectives. It means you must do something. It not means pray, sit, and wait. It means you must do some work. They say faith without works is dead, so you've got to put some action to it. So I believe that, yes, you can have it flow towards you, but it, money seems to flow towards people who put in the effort to attain it. And I don't mean just attain it for survival. I'm talking about attain it when they bless other people. And what I find is people that give more, get more. Yeah, people that give more money seem to get more money, come back to them. Because all the people that I know that are financially free or financially independent, they actually give more than most people that are struggling financially. Obviously, they have more, but they give more. And because they've always been givers, they've always been receivers. Does that make sense? So I, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah? Okay, cool. Thank God. <laughs> okay, then. This will be the very last question. Anybody got a burning question? Did you have one? Um, while you do that, um, Dale, can you put your details on the board, please, so people can contact you? On the, um, he's going to do that for us right now. Sorry? You, got, you, you want to ask questions, my sister? Can you bring the mic for the um, our elder at the back there, please? All this good stuff you missed out on. Hi, my name is Viv. Yes, I came in a bit late, so I missed most of what you were Wait, saying. Hold on. Was it Viv? Yeah. Hi, Viv. Yes. Hi. I came in a bit late, so I kind of missed some of the things that you were saying. Now, if you have like a ten or twenty thousand pounds, what's the best way to get a good investment? Or invest it. It depends. Yeah. It depends on every individual. So I've been, for example, I've been investing money since August two thousand eight was when yeah. I started investing money, mm -hmm. and what. It depends. There's, there's, there's really four areas. Once again, I encourage you to write this down. You need to be getting at least 8% return on your money. 8%. Yeah. 8% mm -hmm. minimum return. Mm -hmm. By the way, just because Viv said that she got £20,000, I don't mean you go and ask her for a loan <laughs> or anything like that. I don't, I just, well, just because she mentioned 20000 I don't mean it was hers. Exactly. She's got a friend of a friend no, that's got £25,000. No, yeah? Just, no. I'm trying, Viv, 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 I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Yeah? She's got a friend of a friend who have a friend that's not her, that's not called Viv, who's got twenty grand. Right? So there's four, there's, only, there's four areas where you're going to get at least an 8% return on your money. Number one, you have to be investing in property. Yeah. Or you're investing in the stock market, i.e. funds. Uh, you're investing into a business that will generate that type of return. Uh -huh. Or you invest in yourself, which means you upskill yourself where you can get a job that's going to pay you more money. 
Now, if you're going to go into property, once again, you've got to have a deposit of whatever that amount is, depending on where you're buying the property. If you go outside of London, you're more likely to be able to get a property where you can get a deposit for 20 grand. Mm. Yeah? You're not going to get as much of a, of a growth in it, but you'll get a decent return, typically. Yeah? Which, if you need to speak to someone, I can tell you who to speak to that will help you in that area. Yeah. If you wanted to go into investing in funds, I would encourage more investing in funds and investing in stocks. Investing in stocks would be you're investing into one company. If that one company crashes, you lose everything. If you invest in funds, you're investing in multiple companies. If one doesn't do so well, you've got the rest of them that hold you up. Exactly. So you're spreading, diversifying. Um, and for that, you, you can actually start investing for £25 a month and start getting your money working for you. No matter who's in there, you can all invest. That's a, like a pound a day, less than a pound a day. Once again, though, you have to be putting that money in consistently, regularly, every single month. How that would work is you would have to do some sort of risk profile which essentially is they ask you some questions and how you answer those questions would determine where your money should go based on your level of risk. So, for example, if the stock market was to crash, what would you do is one of the questions. You'll take your money and run. Uh, I'll leave some of it in, but I'm taking some out. Or I'm going to put more in. Or I'm just going I'm, I'm to want to like, take my own life. That's kind of the options you have. And how you answer the questions like that will say, okay, this woman was very risk, risk averse. She just needs to go to Vegas. This person, they want long-term growth. This person wants to, uh, uh, to, to use it as retirement. Uh, or you invest into a business, but then you have to make sure you, you validate the business. You've got to make sure that the business actually is proven as a system and it's tried and tested and it's generating an income for you. So those would be the, the three places that I, if I had, I'm not gonna say, if I had 20 grand that was spare, yeah, those would be the places that I would look at potentially putting it in. But then also you've got to think about age. So how quickly do you need to get the money? Yeah. Oh. Does that make sense? Okay yeah. then. But talk to me more if you want to talk. More, yeah. Okay then. What we're gonna do now? Um, we're gonna have a break. Is there Please. food during this break? Sorry. Is there food there during this break? Yeah, there, there's food. We're gonna come to that in a second, second, right? Can you please big up um, Daryl? Come, please give him a clap. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay. 